The Northrop YB-49 was an American prototype jet-powered heavy bomber developed by Northrop Corporation shortly after World War II for service with the United States Air Force. The YB-49 featured a flying wing design and was a turbojet-powered development of the earlier, piston-engined Northrop XB-35 and YB-35. The two YB-49s actually built were both converted YB-35 test aircraft. The YB-49 never entered production, being passed over in favor of the more conventional Convair B-36 piston-driven design. Design work performed in the development of the YB-35 and YB-49 nonetheless proved to be valuable to Northrop decades later in the eventual development of the B-2 stealth bomber, which entered service in the early 1990s. Among the aircraft later completed were two airframes that the Air Force ordered be fitted with jet propulsion and designated as YB-49s. The first of these new YB-49 jet-powered aircraft flew on the 22nd of October 1947 and immediately proved more promising than its piston-engine counterpart. The YB-49 set an unofficial endurance record of staying continually above 40,000 feet for 6.5 hours. The second YB-49 was lost on 5 June 1948, killing its pilot, Major Daniel Forbes, co-pilot Captain Glenn Edwards, and three other crew members, one of whom, First Lieutenant Edward Lee Swindell, was a crew member on the Boeing B-29 that assisted Chuck Yeager in breaking the sound barrier in the Bell X-1 aircraft. Speculation at the time was that the YB-49 was lost due to excessive pullout loads imposed on the heavy airframe when a scheduled flight test of the large bomber's stall recovery resulted in a sudden and dramatic high-speed, nose-over dive. The post-stall high-speed dive resulted from the clean, low-drag, all-wing design, which gave the YB-49 a rapid speed increase in any type of dive. Fellow YB-49 test pilot Robert Cardenas later claimed that the YB-49 rotated backwards in stall, and that he warned Edwards about it. Jack Northrup later countered that such a behavior was impossible for the all-wing design. Decades later, this stealthy detail would prove crucial to the design of Northrop Grumman's advanced, all-wing B-2 bomber. General Robert Cardenas also flew the YB-49 during many of its test flights, praising the aircraft for its marvelous performance, while also noting the YB-49 required a very long bomb run to dampen out directional oscillations. Many of these challenges would eventually be overcome when fly by WIR. This change required braces to be added from the wingtop to the fuselage and they added a three-bladed propeller. Ted thought the increased power would bring a buyer to his airplane. World War II interrupted Abrams' work and the single aircraft built was put into storage for the duration of the war. Obsolete by the end of the conflict, it was donated to the U.S. National Air and Space Museum in 1948 where it remains today awaiting restoration. PC-4 Abrams planned a pressurized version of the P-1, named the PC-4 that did not go into production. The Abrams Instrument Corporation C-3 camera was used to produce 659 by 9-inch photos per flight. In 1968 a number of aviation friends met for lunch including Jim Lin who worked at Abrams Aerial Survey. He mentioned the Explorer and no one in the room had heard of it except one. Ron Dietz, who was a student pilot at that time, went to his car and returned with the May issue of the Private Pilot magazine. The idea began that perhaps it was time for Lansing to do something for Mr. Abrams, who often provided financial support when asked. Ellis Hammond, president of the Michigan Aerospace Educational Association and Ron Dietz, engineer at Oldsmobile Division of General Motors, decided to put some time and money into the project. Having worked with the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum's assistant director Don Lopez, the aircraft was released. The aircraft was moved to a state-owned hangar where Dietz was in charge of careful photography before any disassembly was done. The wings were sent to Montcalm Community College where they were carefully stripped, cleaned, repainted and recovered with silver-painted fabric. The instrument's panels and controls were disassembled and restored by Mr. Dietz's colleagues at Oldsmobile. During a visit to the airport Hammond and Dietz lamented at the lack of attention in the shortage of restoration work versus repair work on the aircraft. In 1981 the Lansing Community College Truck Driving School took the plane back to Paul E. Garber Preservation, Restoration, and Storage Facility, where it is today.